When the president issued the Emancipation Proclamation, it was not really uh, something that had effect in Georgia because it was more aspirational and it was more strategic. President Lincoln was trying to uh, increase the number of freed slaves in parts of the South who could fight against the Confederacy. But the Emancipation Proclamation did very little uh, in terms of freeing slaves at the time it was issued in 1863. And finally, in April of 1865, when General Lee surrendered to General Grant in Virginia, we began to see in Georgia uh, a real movement towards the freeing of, of slaves, but it was a slow process. Emancipation came almost place by place slowly because uh, there were, um, in many parts of Georgia, not enough federal troops to enforce the end of, of slavery, to enforce the emancipation. So it became a very slow process. By 1868 in Georgia, uh, there was a, uh, enough federal troops to enforce the, uh, the U.S. Constitution. And there was the beginning, the passage of, of federal amendments to the U.S. Constitution. There was a, uh, what we call today, a Reconstruction Constitution adopted in, uh, in Georgia in 1868. And that, that recognized the, uh, the equality of people. It uh, recognized the right of people to, to work and be paid for their work. And at that point, there began to be some African-Americans who were actually elected to office because they were then able to, to have the vote. And uh, there was great white resistance to this. Um, the, the, the whole society in Georgia was built on the notion that white people were superior and black people were inferior. And uh, between uh, 1876 and 18... 96, there was a, a back and forth. It was a real, it was a 20 year period in which this whole notion of the equality of every citizen was in play every day. Uh, whether it was someone trying to vote, someone trying to go to school, someone trying to get a job that uh, paid a decent wage, someone trying to get uh, a house that, uh, that they could own themselves. Every part of society, there was an uncertainty about just how much equality under the law the state would permit. And white folks generally wanted no equality for African Americans. And black folks obviously wanted their full citizenship, the rights that they, they uh, were entitled to under the, the new Reconstruction Amendments. And uh, generally, that fight went on, and there was an uncertainty about what it actually meant until a case went before the U.S. Supreme Court. And that case uh, we now uh, remember as Plessy versus Ferguson. Plessy versus Ferguson was a Supreme Court case in 1896 uh, involving an African-American man named Homer Plessy. It took place in Louisiana and Homer Plessy sat in a white-only railroad car. And Louisiana, this railroad car company, they had separate cars for whites and blacks. And so he sat in the white-only railroad car, refused to leave. The case ends up going through the lower courts. It gets to the U.S. Supreme Court, and the U.S. Supreme Court decided that it did not violate the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment. So what they decided is separate but equal doctrine came to be. That as long as you have equal facilities, and they were anything but equal in the South, as long as you had equal facilities, it was okay to separate the races. It basically, what it allowed the Southern states to do is some things they were already doing with their Jim Crow laws. They make African Americans to be second class citizens. Jim Crow separated folks on the streetcars. They separated folks in bathrooms. Black folks would not be allowed to use a spigot where water was flowing just to get a drink, even if it was used by white folks in any way. They just simply wanted to separate black people from all of white folks and then assure that in Jim Crow laws that they were unable to influence society so that they could change any of this. 
Some Jim Crow laws were passed during this time to disenfranchise African Americans. Disenfranchise means to deny African Americans the right to vote, to deny a certain group of people, and we associate it within our society to deny African Americans the right to vote. There were several different ways to disenfranchise. Uh, one of the laws was the poll tax. Well, these former slaves just coming out of, of slavery did not have a lot of money. They could not afford the fee to pay in all these different elections. Another was the white primary. And the white primaries, you had to be a white person to vote in it. So African Americans were, were not even allowed to vote in the primary elections to even pick the candidate that they wanted. And then you had literacy tests, which again, it was illegal as slaves to, to learn how to read and write, to teach a slave to read and write. So the majority of African Americans could not pass these literacy tests because they could not read and write legibly. What Jim Crow era did was establish a way with the sanction of the Supreme Court in Plessy versus Ferguson, in which to indirectly infringe upon those rights with the blessings of the rest of the country and the U.S. Supreme Court until Brown versus the Board.